There was a group of us guys for years, like 10 years, we'd go to the book cliffs here in Utah and we'd take horses in there and it, it always seemed like we'd get there late at night, like 11 o'clock, we'd throw out and about two o'clock in the morning you'd get one of those little 15, 30 minute little thunder busters. So you'd have to get up, either get in the horse trailer, in the truck. And a lot of times as I was laying there, I'd think, gal, someday I gotta come up with something that will eliminate this problem. I also one time was laying out on a cot in a canyon and at night, the, sort of the same thing. The wind was howling down the canyon and coming into my sleeping bag. And at that same time, I was just sitting there laying in my sleep bag thinking, I gotta come up with something that can keep the wind off me and protect me. I had to do something to improve my outdoor experience. I, I just thought it was something that I could resolve. I drew a Region G tag in Wyoming and me and Seth went up there and we put up a small wall tent that I had and opening morning we went out and when we came back a squirrel, I don't know what it was, it ate about a six inch hole in the back of our tent. Which was really strange, that had never happened before and we looked around to see if we could find the piece of canvas that was gone or discover what may have eaten it and we couldn't figure anything out. We went to bed, woke up, went hunting all day the next day and when we got back that evening, the hole was actually bigger. We, we started stuffing things all around it to try to deter the critter from eating anymore. But this happened every day we were on the trip. The hole just kept getting bigger and bigger. Uh, when I came home, I approached several people if they would uh, fix my tent, put a patch on it and no one would, so I did some research, my brother-in-law helped me, and I found a sewing machine, and so I decided to buy it to patch my tent. And although it would be less expensive to buy a new wall tent, my dad decided to get an industrial sewing machine, and he was gonna patch his own tent, which he did, but that also led him to be able to create what is now a dominator bedroll. I had some ideas, but the actual idea, I, I, I don't really remember where it come from. I just had found a place that I could source material and I just cut it and sort of made this design and I can't remember where it come from. I just want to show you this uh, is one of the very first, if not the second, bedroll that I ever made. I'm sort of always to the person that goes to the extreme and thinks about and designing things. And it's fun to look back and see that I was, I was afraid that I would tear the teeth out of the zipper. So I integrated this so that that would absorb all the pressure and I'd never tear the zipper out. I find it pretty cool that I surged these and even today a lot of people don't and I, I was looking and on the zipper I've double stitched that but if I flip it over it's got a single stitch. I wanted a place to put my extra some extra clothes or a coat so that they were always in my bedroll and so in the beginning I had this pocket that I could put some of my stuff in but after using it a few times this sort of puffed up and it was more of a pain and then I also didn't like any seams on the outside and so I did away with that like I was saying, I'm sort of an overkill, but I wanted it to, to hold up to whatever was thrown at it. And I think it, well, obviously after 23 years, it's still here, still usable. He ended up sewing together this amazing piece of gear that his friends and then soon their friends and family wanted. And it just started to grow by word of mouth. And, and they enjoyed it. And that enjoyment, I think, is what it still drives me today, is just seeing them out and having a good time 
and knowing something that I had designed makes their outdoor experience a lot better. I remember the first time where it really set in how awesome this piece of gear was. I was probably 15, 16 years old and we went um, scouting for deer and we just threw out like we always did. It was dry. We threw out that night and I went to bed and I woke up the next morning. I was so rested. I felt so good. And I un unzipped my bedroll more. We didn't have a pole system at the time. I unzipped my bedroll a little bit more and looked out and snow started falling like down and into my bedroll. It snowed like six inches that night. Had no idea. I just slept like a baby. And I remember as a teenager being like, that's pretty cool. This is pretty cool. It's, it's crazy to think about that beginning and my dad not knowing what he was doing, not just in what he was creating, but what it would become. A company that's going out and trying to improve people's outdoor experiences and to build quality gear they can depend on in any situation. From that small start in a basement by a railroad worker who didn't know how to sew. That's really cool to me. It is, it's exciting, it's scary, it's fulfilling that we can take this company that started from a canvas bedroll that Sheryl, for whatever reason, felt like he needed to develop to help facilitate a more comfortable, you know, camping, hunting experience. Seeing that original bedroll in its form, almost getting goosebumps now in seeing what that has morphed into to you know the Dominator and Fortress 2.0, what it eventually, what those actually will change into in the future with different things that we have on the horizon, and then we've got <laughs> we've got hunting and camping down in that in that capacity, but now we're we're looking at Western emergency preparedness and beer and barbecue and overland and, and off-roading. Like there's so many avenues that we readily fit into and the brand has so much potential that um, I'm just truly blessed to be a part of that journey. So from that initial idea that came out of a basement, as all good ideas come from a problem, it, it just continues to grow, right? We have new products coming out, you know, at least every three to six months. A lot of those are groundbreaking products and I think it just continues to grow from there with bigger and better things. So I think Canvas Cutter has become a brand and also an idea. I think it's an idea that there is still so much value in some of these more classic types of materials like canvas. I think a lot of times canvas gets pushed to the wayside in favor of something maybe more lightweight or cheaper but I think a lot of people are yearning for the classic durable feel of canvas and yearning for products that bring back that durability and the idea that stuff should last forever. I think that the potential for Canvas Cutter as a brand is really limitless. I feel like as more things become cheaper and cheaper, there will always be a larger group of people who desire higher quality gear. I see Canvas Cutter as becoming a household name that people will recognize as that gear is good and that will last the rest of your life. Meaning people will recognize the name and recognize the products associated with it as very durable, high quality. Um, you pay for it once, but you, you have it the rest of your life. Um, and basically it's a product that people will want to brag to their friends and family about because it's just that good. Our goal is to be able to provide durable, quality, long lasting products that you pass down to your children and grandchildren. And we have a uncompromising mindset when it comes to that. We have no interest in cutting corners. I want to uh, be a brand that people rely on, that people know if they invest in those products that they're gonna be around to give to their kids and their grandkids. It's been really interesting to me, sort of a, just your average guy that had an idea 
and ran with it and it sort of turned into a big company that lots of people benefit from from this one idea this one product now we've come up with other ideas and our brand is something that I am very proud of we we hold a high quality uh, we go the extra mile and everything as a consumer I hope that you hold people to that standard that something that we're extremely proud of here at canvas cutter and something something that I'm proud of of all the guys that participate and help build canvas cutter I'm extremely proud of all these guys and, and what they're trying to accomplish <clears throat> and what they're trying to do to to make memories with you and your family and your friends and to enjoy the outdoors. One of my favorite sayings is enjoy the journey and to me gear is everything. Mm -hmm.